go ahead and start chatting. All right, so this is Megan here. Say hi, Megan. Hi, Megan. <laughs> uh, she is in charge of all of our biology micro program. Today we're doing a round of plates. We plate every beer at least four times during fermentation during the process, from day one of fermentation to packaging. Every beer is plated at least four times. Uh, we do this every day. So beers, fresh beers that were brewed, beers that were transferred to bright tanks, beers that are canned or kegged, they're gonna get tested at some point uh, during the week, every day of the week pretty much. I, I could have said that better, but I didn't. So you, so you test <laughs> you test every beer at every stage? Every stage, exactly. So being Every beer at every stage yep. gets plated? Yep. And what is that process? What are, so what, what are we doing then? Uh, so uh, I, I just take uh, one of these and I've got my little, um, what do you call the Torch. Torch, yeah. Um, and then I'll clean the outside and the port on the fermenter. So that's just a sample. sample that's mm -hmm. just a sample of, of the. So capturing a sample of the beer. Yeah. Out of the port on the side of the fermenter. Mm -hmm. And yep. Or the bright tank. Um, in some cases. Or right. Or bright or tank. The cans. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you actually flame the tops of the cans. Yeah. I, I've seen that before. Yeah. So. And I'll flame those and then. It and how do you flame those? Uh, With. Spray it ISO. So you just so you just light the uh, mm -hmm. the alcohol. Kill it. There you go. Yep, it's a flame sterilization. So if there's any residue on top of the can, let's say the lid is dirty or the tab is dirty from us touching it at some point, uh, we're gonna kill all of those microbes on top of the can because we don't care about those. All we care about is what's inside the can itself. So a quick flame sterilization will kill all that stuff on the top, letting us just pull the sample from what's in the can and what's in the can only to put on a plate. Got it. Make, got it. Want to make sure you're not pulling... Yeah, the way false positives. Yeah, false positives. Mm -hmm. yeah, that was, that's the term. Yep. And with our okay. plates, we run... Uh, today we're actually running six different medias. We usually only do four, but Fridays we do a little bit of everything. Uh, do you want to show plates, pull plates, Meg? So first one is WLD, a Wallstein Labs differential media. That is for the detection of bacteria. Uh, it's the indicator inside the media itself that will change the color of the presence of acid. So any sort of lactic acid producing bacteria, lactobacillus, pediococcus, the main ones we're afraid of in the brewery, will take, turn that plate from a blue color to a yellow color. It's kind of uh, neat. Second plate, the yellow one, is called UBA, Universal Beer Agar. This is probably the most common media used in breweries. It will grow anything, it will grow anything that grows on beer. So it's a great so general anything growing. other than the bacteria. It will grow bacteria too. It'll grow just a general picture of uh, every like, microbe like in beer. Wild yeast. Wild yeast, brewer's yeast. Gotcha. Uh, so depending on the step the beer is in, we expect to see different things on that plate. For fermenting, fermenting samples, we want to see a lot of yeast, just the whole lot, just sure. covered everywhere. Sure. Bright tanks, we don't want to see anything. Same with cans, unless it's a hazy IPA or something that's unfiltered. But yeah. for the most part, that's a good indicator of what generally is on that plate itself. Next round, we have two. Uh, this is an eye plate. These are just for wild yeast. The purple one is LWYM, Lynn's Wild Yeast Media. And that will detect Saccharomyces type wild yeast. So Saccharomyces cerevisiae is brewer's yeast. There's uh, Schizosaccharomyces, there's Saccharomyces, oh boy, there's a couple, I'm not going to, off the top of my head. <laughs> but uh, how about like Bertanomyces? Bertanomyces, so that's the next plate, this yellowish oh, one, okay. is LCSM, Lynn's Cupric Sulfate Media, which detect non-Saccharomyces wild yeast. Oh, I see. So all together we can get the whole range of types of wild yeast that can grow in beer. So Bertanomyces oh, and uh, Diastaticus, those will all grow on the other media there. Gotcha. Next round is something we do on Fridays. Uh, the one on this guy, yeah, the greenish one, is a new one called FPDM or FP Farmer something. Farmer Farmer Pharmaceuticals Diastatic Media. What it stands for? It just grows diastaticus, which has been a big problem in the brewing industry recently. Yeah. We've had issues with it, so this is a it's an expensive media. So we only do it once a week. We only use it on the beers that we brewed that week. So everything that was brewed this past week, we can play it on this media today. Then we next week, we're ready to pull yeast. We can know that there's no diastaticus in any of the yeast that we're pulling from that did not infect any more batches. The other one is WLD. It's another general growth, kind of like our UVA, but it changes color based on the types of colonies. So let's go for colony differentiation. If we see a couple colonies that's all the same color, that's a good thing. 
if you see six or seven different colors, that means there's six or seven different species of either yeast or bacteria that are growing in the product. Wow. So all of these combined can help us paint a picture of what's in there, but individually, none of them are that great. You know, we need all, we really need all of them sort to of see. Need the, need the whole gamut to, exactly. to tell you. Exactly. So, so you collected your sample, I just want to verify, on, um, on the fermenter side or bright tank side, you used, probably just used isopropyl, yep. like, like when you're pulling a yeast sample like we just did. Um, only on the cans would you flame it, right? I, I'll flame, uh, so like empty, I'll spray the tasting valve or sample valve and, with isopropyl, then flame that, and then I take my uh, aluminum foil off, spray the outside the of this, of flame well. the top of this, and then I'll reflame the sample port as well. Gotcha. So, so we're flame everything sterilized is super everything. sterile. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We make sure okay. the only thing we're testing is the beer itself. Yeah. And all of our glassware goes through our autoclave to sterilize the glassware itself. I'll show the autoclave in, in just a mm -hmm. second. Yep. Um, so, so basically, uh, uh, are you going to show me how, or just describe yep. how yeah. you would okay. uh, how you would pull a sample out of your uh, yeah. sample flask and and uh, yep. get that onto so a plate? How I set up for the day. Um, I've got all the plates I'll need, and then I'll go through and put each one in a stack. So each fermenter has one of each of the plates stacked in the same order um, and then I label them all with where it came from, what beer it is, and the date. Um, and then all I do is I take a hundred microliters and put it on each plate. You just kind of put it in one little place or you kind of streak yep. it around? Um, I'll put them all on and then I'll streak them. Oh, I see. Just like that. And I got my spreader. Always pull a new one out of the package. Yep. Got to keep things sterile and clean. And then you're spreading and it around. I'm spreading it around, kind of keeping it in the middle. But yeah. Awesome. That's it. Cool. And then, so then after you've got it plated, and, and I, I, I showed we're in a, uh, a hood, a hood yeah. here as well, keeping everything clean. We don't want anything falling off my camera in there or anything. So uh, after we've plated everything, then, then what happens? How long do you have to wait and what do you do with it before you can see some results? Um, I'll leave them under the hood for 10 minutes before I put them in the incubator and then they'll sit in the incubator for five, six days. Um, five or six days? Yeah, and then I'll pull them out and check them. And we log all of the information in the spreadsheet as well so we have a record of everything. So this, this incubator, um, what, is, is that a temperature? Yeah, 28 okay. degrees Celsius. So it's about, yeah, what is that? 95 degrees or so? Yeah, kind of warm. Yeah. So uh, that's that's going to help things uh, grow a little faster. Yep. So but obviously examples. you would you would want time planned out that you have this done uh, before you're releasing a beer, right? Before sure. it goes out the door, yep. before you can it, or mm -hmm. certain stages. So you have to have all this coordinated and planned. Yep. Uh, right. and timed out just right so you're not holding up production but getting the results you need. Right. Yeah, the, one of the biggest steps before any packaging is transferring the beer from the fermenters to the bright tank. Because legally, it's not beer in the fermenter. It's beer once it hits the bright tank. So when you see a problem with the beer, we want to catch it early, that way we're not paying taxes on it. Exactly. If we have a bad beer and it goes, through the, goes to a bright tank, not only do we have to dump it, we also have to pay taxes on the beer that we dumped. Versus a fermenter, we get to dump it down the drain Chalk up as a loss and move on with our lives. So, yep. yep. Uh, well, example. I'm sure that hardly ever happens, though. Hardly ever. Yeah. Hardly ever happens. happens. It does happen, but it's very. And, and I would guess, I would yeah. guess, hardly ever do you see uh, any results yeah, on these plates, which lulls you probably into a sense of false security. Yep. Because <laughs> because you do this religiously, yeah. daily, all the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're hoping you never see anything yeah, that's, from it. The ultimate goal here is not to see anything grow on these plates. Yeah. So, for example, these are from this past Tuesday. Fermenters, wild yeast, these are still spotless. Nothing growing on them. Show that again. Yeah. 
Oh, so you're dead? Hold on. Yep, all clean. No bacteria either? Yep. But this is our brewer's yeast, so we expect to see a lot of yeast, which is, that makes sense. But seeing a whole bunch of growth on this plate, but nothing uh, anywhere see. else, tells that this is just brewer's yeast. So that, that is literally growth everywhere, mm -hmm. except for the little open spaces. Yeah. Yeah, I see, okay. Uh, compare that to this guy, this is a sample from a keg. Clean, no wild yeast. Yep. No bacteria. And just a few colonies of brewer's yeast. That's okay. That's okay. We're not mad about that. So, fermenting sample versus a keg sample, we're going to see much less yeast. Now, hazy IPAs and unfiltered beers will look a lot more like this in the finished product. Uh, filtered beers, this is Osiris. Or, or Hefeweizens. Hefeweizens, Whit beers, Belgian beers, anything that's unfiltered. We'll see a lot more yeast in there, but for us, that's not bad. A couple colonies isn't going to do anything in there. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, uh, so let's see, that, that was your plating, your incubator. But what if you don't have an incubator? Um, I mean, anyone can buy some plates. Mm -hmm. Not everyone, not every, not every small brewery would have to uh, do this as often, mm -hmm. perhaps, as you guys do. Sure. Um, but but still a good idea to at least spot check, perhaps. Yeah, for sure. And if you don't have an incubator, I mean, it sounds like it's just a, a bit over room temperature, so just put it on top of the refrigerator or yeah, somewhere some place kind of warm. Kind of warm. You, you know, always send samples to us. We do a uh, whole program for checking other people's beers. So if you want to test something, let us know. We're happy to do it. Uh, we also sell plates. Um, they're very expensive to buy from a manufacturer or supplier's website. They're about a buck forty a plate to do it. Uh, it costs us to make them about seventeen cents in materials. <laughs> then time and labor, all that as well. But it is right. much cheaper to make your own. Uh, but yeah. Oh, well, I see. You, you we buy your plates. plates or you no, we, we make your own. We plates. make your own plates. Yeah, you can buy pre-made plates. No, I they're, see. they're about a buck forty a piece. Yeah, you can make them yourself for about seventeen to twenty cents. I see. But medium. if you're only doing it every once in a while, yeah, and they only last five to seven days, so you don't have a lot of time with the plates either. Either once they're made, so the ones you get from a manufacturer, you need to use them within a week or so. Oh. Otherwise, they're not going to be any good. Okay, that's a good point. Yeah, you can't leave them sitting around. No, correct, correct. All right. A better option for smaller breweries is something called H or yeah HLP. It's a broth. It's not a media, so it's an actual liquid. You get a sterile test tube. You can just drop that in a pot of boiling water for a few minutes. That'll sterilize it. Uh, you make this meat, uh, broth, H, yeah, HLP, Sue's Lactobacillus pediococcus broth. And it's a clearish, yellowish liquid, but it is clear to see through. You put a sample of beer in there. Let it sit, uh, I think even room temp is fine for a few days. If it turns cloudy, it means there's bacteria. If it stays clear, it means that there's not bacteria. So it's uh, not a full-fledged thing, but it's a really cheap, easy way to do a small micro program at a small brewery. Uh, without a, You don't need an autoclave, you don't need anything fancy, you don't need an incubator, you just need some test tubes, pretty much. Wow. Yeah, um, yeah very cheap, very easy. HLP is what it's called. HLP. And it's a, it's a liquid broth. So it's not a plate, not an agar plate. It just and it gets cloudy and it's, it means it's full of bacteria. If it awesome. stays clear, it's not. So a very easy, quick check for anybody. Okay, uh, sounds good. I'm gonna spin around while I'm still on this uh, this video segment and get a uh, shot of the autoclave. So this is your autoclave, right? And basically, it just uh, uh, it's just a sanitizer. It's just like an oven, right? Yeah. Like a pressure cooker. Pressure cooker. Yeah. It's I just actually. So is, it, like... is it hot or just? Uh, yeah. Ah, look at that. Steam rolling out of there. Right. I gotcha. So 273 degree steam at 30 PSI for about 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. We'll kill just about everything in the world. Step up here and say that again just to make sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's about 273 degrees Fahrenheit uh, for, at 30 PSI for about 15 minutes. And that kills just about everything. Awesome. If it doesn't kill it, it deserves to take over the world. <laughs> All right. Fantastic. Nice little segment. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to stop this unless we're ready to move. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, you can stop it for now.